Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to another episode in my series, Behind the Raw, where I take you with me to talk you through my entire work process, my editing and my thoughts on a particular image. And this week, I'm really excited to share. This is the first image from an incredible trip that I took up to meet my good buddy, Bernard Gerrity. Now he lives in Mayo, which is very close to Connemara. And this is where we went to on the first outing that we had. And after that, things got incredibly amazing. Let's just say, I can't wait to share all that content with you. And before I jump over onto the computer, I just want to say a massive thank you to everybody who's picked up a copy of my redesigned um, photography location guidebooks. I'm really excited now to be able to see, you know, the more images there that you'll take from it. And also the feedback that I've gotten so far has been phenomenal. So thank you to everybody who has picked up a copy. And if you haven't, I'll leave a link in the description below where you can pick up your own copy and you can also get a free light version when you subscribe to my newsletter. So yeah, thank you very much to everybody for that. So I'm going to jump over here onto the computer. We're going to go into Lightroom Classic and I'm going to talk you through how I would approach one particular image from my recent shoot. Let's go. Okay, so here we are now on Lightroom and here's the image that I've chosen to edit. And this was a phenomenal place for us to come across, particularly when we just had started out on our adventure. And there was this lake here, which, which you can really see here is a sandy beach. Now, this is in the mountainous area and a hilly area of Connemara. So I was quite surprised, number one, to be able to see the sand. But then number two, there was three beautiful boats that were moored uh, along the shore. And this is the second boat and the one in the, in the middle of both. Um, and this is the one that I've chosen to be able to take uh, this image of. And what I really like about this image was the positioning of the boat here. You can see it was pretty much dead on. Now the one that was over on the left hand side here was kind of on this side. And then the one on the right hand side was going this direction and was right next to a fence. But here I loved the simplicity of this image. Now I set this up as well for it to be kind of symmetrical by intention. Um, so I wanted to kind of utilize the rule of thirds or as Mass Peter Everson said, the tool of thirds, or thirds, not thirds. <laughs> um, but I wanted to take the bottom here of the sand and the middle section to be the water and then the top section here to be the hills and this beautiful sky. And with the boat then intersecting as well, I think it worked very well. Now, I did a long exposure shot here, which is the one that I'm going to edit. I also took a regular exposure. And what I liked about the long exposure is you get the movement in the cloud that's here. It smooths out this water and plus we had fleeting light. So it captured the light as it would have come and gone during this exposure. So first and foremost, if I give you a look at the settings I took the shot at, it was 25 seconds. It was at F14, ISO was at 100, and I took it at 16 mil. Now, when I look at this, and if I zoom in here to show you something, I kind of want to kind of pixel peep for a moment and show you an error in my ways. So when I do my one-to-ones, um, one of the things that I really give people advice on is about composition and about fine tuning your composition. And I use it for age, which is called six inches and about moving your camera six inches after you've got your composition set up. And this is a classic example where I, looking at this afterwards, have made a mistake. Is that if you look here, it's not perfectly symmetrical. So by me moving the camera over here to the right hand side, it would have moved this to the left, which would have meant that this part of the bow of the boat would have been bang smack in the middle. Now also on top of that, by moving slightly to the right, I think I would have gotten it more central as well in the frame. It is quite central overall anyway, but at the same point, when we start looking at the crop, it doesn't really sit exactly well. Now, it's me, I suppose I'm being you know, quite picky in relation to that. I still love this image and I think you know it's one that I actually will print um, because it gives me such good memories of the start of my trip. But yeah, just take that advice when you are composing your shot. Once you've got it done, then just move your camera ever so slightly and take those shots as well, because you never know what will happen afterwards that you will be happy to have fixed. So. This edit is going to be a pretty straightforward edit because when I look at how I took the photograph and it's something I always generally try and do anyway is get it right in camera. Um, I've got nothing that's on the dark end and I've got nothing that's on the bright end. So first and foremost, what I want to do is say, okay, do I need to look at um, my white balance? Now, when I look at my white balance, uh, it says here it's going to be as shot. And I think that looks perfectly fine, but you take your dropper 
And if you pick a gray cloud, you'll see it will slightly adjust it. So if I give you a look at what it's done here, we've gone from 5,350 um, up to 5,900, I think it was, 5,950. So, you know, that will give you slight variations as well, depending on the cloud that you hit. So you see 5,900, if I had a darker cloud, or if I hit this white, uh, more basic neutral gray, it gives me 5,500. So it's all around that area, I suppose, is the key one here for me. And I like this 5,950 because it's giving me a more of a warmer tone, which is matching what I see on the sand. Second thing I want to do is to check my horizon, as I always will do. So I'm going to come in here to this. And if I look and if I show you this line that you see across here, you can see that it looks pretty much straight, but there is a micro adjustment that I can do. And it's only a micro adjustment. So I can see that it's slightly tapering off here on this right hand side. So I want to be able to just to adjust that ever so slightly. So yeah, I think that's right. And if I look at the angle, it's 0.24 so a quarter of a degree of a movement here but again you know i always try and get it right in camera first and foremost next thing i want to look at is say okay do i want to change my crop so if i look here generally i like to go for a 16.9 when i'm in the videos because it fits within the video perfectly well but if i'm ever just doing an image for itself i won't do that but if I look here and take this and bring this now directly to this point, 16.9 does seem to work. And as I mentioned earlier on, my thought process here was on the rule of thirds. So on the top half, you've got this here. In the center, you've got the water with the boat intersecting, and then you've got the sand at the bottom. Now, if I take that image here and look at this, I mean, it does look nice, but I do think that it's probably too tight um, from the tops so I want to uh, change that out and I want to just go back to uh, my original ratio and I'm just going to make sure now as well that I check my adjustments at 0 0.24 okay it is perfectly straight so that's the first things out of the way next thing I want to then is look at the standard area that I do from a uh, adjustments point of view highlights if I take those just for example bring them all the way down here you see that I have the cloud detail coming out here. You can see the movements that are within those clouds. But what it does do is it creates some brighter areas of like in hot spots per se of lighter clouds that were there. So I don't want to go that far because they become more distinguished, let's just say. So a slight drop in highlights is all I need to do. Or I could also bring my highlights up. And now if you notice that this area here, when I change my highlights, I lose that separation. So I'm going to drop it ever so slightly. On shadows, now, interestingly enough, if I take the shadows and whack them all the way up here, you see what it does is it brightens up the darker areas, which are just on the outsides, but it kind of gives it far too much of a HDR effect. You know, these sliders are not designed to go to uh, 10 or 100 percent, or some people would like to go to Spinal Tap 11. But, you know, small adjustments are all that's needed to be able to refine your image. Now, if I bring it back to normal here and I just take a slight bit of an increase, if you look here, it's only the outsides of the frame that are being affected in reality. And the reason for that is because the light was shining directly on the boat here. So there is no real shadow area in the center of the image. But I want to try and make sure that it's more balanced. So if I look here, it's giving a vignette. But if I bring my shadows up to around about maybe 50, you know, I get a more of a balance across all of the image. Now, I can also affect that when I get to my blacks, but I can also affect the sky up here when I get to my whites. So histogram is going to tell me what I can do here. So if I turn on my... Uh, highlighting priority here which gives you that little box so once that's ticked up here you'll see uh, this will light up here but also show you the corresponding areas and this example is what I said earlier on about the bright area in the sky so I'm going to bring my whites to where max that I can bring it to before it starts clipping and then on the blacks as well if I bring those all the way down you see it once again you know it is darkening on the outsides because everything here in the center was the brightest part of the image now what i don't like about bringing down those blacks again is that it brings more of a vignette back into the frame and also you can see the dark areas here appearing on the screen overall so from a black's point of view not much really to do just give it a small bit of reduction and then when i start looking at the final areas here from a dehaze point of view if i again whack my dehaze all the way up here okay you can see that the image goes to pot but the reason I do that is um, I want to be able to see from a spots point of view. So if I come up to here, I know that I've got this sensor spot that's here. So I can click on this and I can make my brush ever so slightly bigger and then click on that 
I know that takes a good job of removing that. But this also allows me then to be able to see any spots that wouldn't necessarily be seen by the built-in feature that's in Lightroom, which is called visualizing spots. So there's one right here on this cloud. So I can click on that. And again, moving over to the right hand side. Okay, I have another one that I've got here. So I definitely need to go get my uh, sensor cleaned. I might have to give Dermot a shout. He is a guru at cleaning sensors. Um, and then uh, one final one actually here, look in the middle, which you wouldn't even see. So it's right here. So now that's going to be removed also. Now, also because I've been doing a long exposure, uh, what you also need to do is check here in the water because you can only you'll see those because the water will have been smoothed out. Um, nothing there, okay, perfect. So now if I go back out, I click on this to go back into fit and I take my dehaze and bring it all the way back down. So double clicking it will bring it back to the center. You can see here that anything I've adjusted up here, you can see that I've taken away those dust spots. But I do want to add a small bit of dehaze here because watch what it does is I give a small bit of a change. It makes that image more contrasty and gives it more punch. And when I look at that here, the final thing I want to do is say, okay, do I want to increase my vibrance? Now, the color palette on this I really like because you've got the golden sand that's here. You've got this boat with the green and then you've got the green on the top as well here. Now, if I take my vibrance and again, you know, I go spinal tap and I go all the way up here, it's far too colorful, it looks sickly. You don't ever want to bring your vibrance all the way up. And similarly for that, you never want to be able to bring your saturation all the way up as well. Be very careful with your colors. You know, you might have a very natural, colorful scene and you may not necessarily even have to add any vibrance into that. But because you're shooting in a raw file, it's always good to give it a touch anyway of uh, vibrance. And I prefer vibrance than I do on saturation. So touch of vibrance here, probably up around there, I think. If I have a look at the before, and then the after, yeah, I mean, look, the before here is quite muted, but if I look at this, it's got a bit more punch. Um, and finally, I suppose, just from a bit of housekeeping point of view, and this is something that uh, I didn't spot when I was doing my original edit on that, was down this area over here. So there's a bit of shrapnel on the ground and I want to uh, remove that. So I can just come in here, select it with my removal tool, and it does a pretty good job of finding another area. But what I don't like is it's taking it too close to this. You can see this line is repeating that line down here because I'm dealing with a subject here that is um, quite ununiform. Let's just say I can pretty much take it from anywhere. But what you don't want to do is to take, OK, an exact example where you see a lump that I'm bringing from over here. It doesn't blend in. So, you know, for me, I just want to take it something like this and then we just do a micro adjustment and you can't then see it. And then uh, when I look at the image as well, you know, with another, with a long exposure shot, you can see that the boat is perfectly still and that's because the boat was moored up against the sand, but you can see the slight movements here in the rope. Now I could go in and take those out, um, but for me, I don't want to take them out. I like it actually on it because I know that the they were moving, let's just say. Um, the purists and people would look at that and you know, might be screaming and hitting their keyboard right now. Why don't you fix that? It's entirely up to you if you want to fix it. For me, I don't necessarily want to fix it. So if I look at my um, overall picture here, I take off and back onto this. So I'm removing those removal tools. I really, really like that shot. The final thing that I'm going to go in, as always, is utilize the AI within um, Lightroom from a noise reduction point of view. There isn't much noise here, except when you get up into the clouds, there's a slight bit of noise, and I'll show you that here once this loads through. So what this will do is it'll kick it up and say, okay, this is gonna give you a preview of what the image like is like before you have noise uh, removal and after noise removal. So if we were to move this around here, you can see on the boat, you know, okay, there's no noise to be removed there, but if we go up to the sky, like I mentioned, slight bit of noise here, and now that just smooths it out completely. So yeah, I'm going to um, let that do its thing. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed my uh, view here in relation to my edit from this image from this absolutely stunning location. I'm really excited now to be able to share the, re the rest of the adventures that myself and Bernard had. This is only the beginning. If you haven't seen this episode, actually, I'll link to it up here or up 
here. Um, but join me next week when things start getting really interesting. So the life here was very fleeting and myself and Bernard decided to go for a drive around the area and we'd let the light decide where we were going to go. It meant that we couldn't be fixed in our plan and that we had to be fluid. But some of the things that we came across there were absolutely incredible. And like I said, I can't wait to share it with you. So thank you very much as always. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, please shout them in the comments below. If it's your first time on the channel, please hit the subscribe button, give me a like, give me a comment. And until the next time, Schlong the Fall.